Hi and welcome to a pretty exciting build episode on my RC Scrappy. I'm Mark on RC Nerd 74. In today's video, I'm gonna show you all the build steps I did on the double slotted flaps on RC Scrappy. Luckily, everything went well so far with testing and all the build up of the flaps. And we're also gonna have a short glance at the last shaping of the rudder fin and the final design of the wheel axles. This is it, what will happen today. So let's have a closer look and jump right into the build steps. Before I started to work on the actual flaps, I had to make a template out of cardboard just to make sure that the solution, the design I wanted to build actually works. Then I draw the horn position on the rear flap part and cut the rudder horn shape into the template to make the template work with the servo. Then I made a few holes into the rudder horn to change the position of the rod to check on which position the flap works best. Then I marked the position of the rudder horn on the actual flap, temporarily removed the flap rod and cut off the flap from the wing. The stock hinges were removed just because I don't like this solution of hinges and I will finally install real hinges. Then I did the first function check with the real hinges just to check if both parts of the double slotted flap move right. Then I had to sand some edges and uneven spots on the stock flap, remove the stuck rudder horns and mark stock rudder horn position on the flap to install the carbon fiber rudder horn later at the exact same position. Then I draw the line for the flap extension. I wanted to extend the flaps about one centimeter. The same thing I will do on the ailerons. For this I first had to mark the line where I had to sand a step into the stock flap then cut a one millimeter deep cut into the stock flap to get a clean sand line when I sand down the stock flap to get the step for the one millimeter carbon fiber plate. After the step was sanded into the flap I draw the carbon flap extension, cut it with my Dremel, sanded it to perfect shape, all edges nice and straight, then sanded the whole surface of the carbon extension to increase the grip of the glue. Before I glued it on the flap I taped it to get it into the exact right position so during gluing I could only flip the extension over, put on the glue, flip the extension back onto the flap like this I had the perfect position for the carbon fiber part. After curing I had to remove the tape and sand the surface to perfectly even and smooth surface. There were some little glue remains, some 24 hour epoxy remains. Removed all this and the result looked pretty nice. Then it was time to cut the stock flap in half to get the double slotted flap design and draw the hinges position to connect both flap parts. To make the hinges fit better I had to sand down the edges a bit to get more space for the hinges. Then I cut the slots and filed the slots for the hinges. Then I did the first fit and movement check with new hinges and all looked good so far. And for all the gaps I had now on the stock flap, I had to cut some foam parts to fill up all the gaps. So there were gaps from the stock rudder horns, there were gaps from the lower side of the extension and I had to fill up all these gaps. And then glued on the cut foam parts onto the flap, sand them down to a perfect smooth surface. After the shaping was done, I started drawing and cutting the carbon rudder horns sand them to a shape, marked the drill holes on the rudder horns and drilled holes for rod end installation. Took 1.5 millimeter drill to get a perfect playless fit of the rod ends onto the rudder horns. And also sanded the lower edge which will be pushed into the flap to a sharp knife edge to get it easier into the flap slot. When all the shaping was done of the rudder horns I did a copy 
of both rudder horns just to make it easier to get the second set of rudder horns to the exact same shape. Then I cut it and fired the slots for the rudder horns into the flap. On the servo horn side I had to drill the holes of the servo horn up to 2.2 mm to get playless fit of the rod ends. To make a dampened, soft but playless fit of the rod ends I used some cable insulation on the rod ends to get a perfect playless fit. Then it was time to install the rod ends measured the carbon rod lengths for the flaps, cut them to the right length and to make them fit perfect into the holes of the rod ends I had to sand down the 2.5 mm rods to around 2.2 mm which is the hole in the rod ends which I also drilled up to these 2.2 mm to make the connection a bit stronger. After the test installation of the rods I was ready to glue the rudder horns into the rudder because I now knew that everything fits perfect and everything works like it should. The stock shape of the front part of the double slotted flap has a huge gap between the flap and the wing and because the movement is much less now with double slotted flaps I wanted to close that gap to a minimum for this I also took XPS foam, cut it, sanded it down to the right shape, glued it on the front part of the flap and sanded it to perfect shape. And after this I did the final check with the final flap design. Then I also did the last steps on the final design of the rudder fin. This was a little challenge to get that perfect scale looking rudder fin. But the solution what I figured out was that I used 24 hour epoxy to get the perfect 3D shape of the rudder fin. I took uh, sanded XPS foam, mixed it up with epoxy and like this you get a thick kind of 24 hour epoxy. And with this foam you can do uh, thicker shapes so you can add on 24 hour epoxy and let it cure for 24 hours and sand it to the shape you ever want. After I sanded it to raw shape I put it on a epoxy cover layer just to check if the final look is okay then wet sanded it again to get it to the absolute perfect smooth final shape. To lock the wheels on the wheel axles I wanted to screw in a uh, screw into the axle. Uh, my axle is a little special, it's a brass tube with a glued in carbon fiber tube. Because of this I wasn't sure if my solution will work. I wanted to cut the M3 thread into the carbon fiber tube. For this I had to cut the axles to the final length sand the smooth shape and drill the 2.5 mm hole into the carbon tube. Then I cut the M3 thread into the carbon tube but this didn't work because the carbon is too soft, it broke off and the thread didn't work at all. For the second try to make the threads into the wheel axles I filled the holes with 24 hour epoxy and redrailed the holes with 2.5 mm and cut it the M3 thread again. This worked pretty well. The trick is that you don't do all three steps to cut the thread but only use the first or the first and the second. Like this you don't have a perfect thread but the advantage is that it's a bit stronger so it's more resistant to screw the M3 screw into the epoxy thread and like this the screws fit pretty well and keep the wheels perfectly in place. This is it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Next videos will be about more modifications on the wings. If you want to check out another exciting RC Scrappy build go for uh, Marco Roulette. He also did an awesome build of an RC Scrappy a uh, little bit different on the touch at what I tried here but also exciting build so again thanks a lot for following along see you in the next one have a good time happy flying bye bye